Hello everybody and welcome back to the Moshix mainframe channel. This is Moshix. Let's talk about editing workflow or programming workflow. My very first computer that I owned myself was this computer here. That's a Sharp MZ80A uh, and uh, as you can see it's, uh, it's a computer with an integrated uh, uh, tape drive and it had a 40 column uh, monitor and on this computer I spent in my uh, in my early teens when I was about 13 14 I must have spent probably eight hours a day other than school uh, programming in first in assembler and uh, actually first in machine code because I didn't even have an assembler then uh, I got uh, a present uh, an assembler later on which could be loaded from tape and then later on in basic uh, basic had to be loaded from from tape as well. There was no programming language installed on this computer. Everything was either just machine code or you had to read it in. Um, and in fact, I a couple of years ago I bought this very same computer again just to have it, and I still uh, I still sometimes write code on it. And and so uh, there was really no editor on this machine. There was just one line at a time, and uh, if you want, needed to change the line, you had to type it in again. And and so. Uh, only just two or three years later, I went from this, I went to uh, this. So uh, I went to a, an MVS shop and uh, in, uh, in my uh, military time and I was amazed that you could have an editor such as ISPF where you could uh, insert line and do stuff and, and move it around, uh, stuff like this. And I was just uh, amazed at the, at the at the possibilities of the full screen editor, which I had never seen before in my life. And uh, and in fact, it's the love for the ISPF editor that um, that uh, brought me back to the mainframe about six or seven, or maybe by now eight years ago again. And during the time when I left uh, the the military until, uh, as I said, six seven years ago, I had never actually. Uh, touch the mainframe again and uh, and so but what I did do a lot was work with with VI as uh, in the last 20 years or so I've done a lot of development on Linux and, uh, and other Unix operating systems and the one thing that you find on any um, on every kind of Unix operating system when you log in is always a VI um, uh, editor and of course in the meantime we have Vim which is uh, VI improved and very very substantially improved and and so I just love working with VI and um, and so of course I also like other editors uh, I sometimes use uh, Joe um, as you can see here it's a very fine editor as well it has very good um, keyboard shortcuts you can do stuff uh, very easily and uh, it's quite responsive but what I kind of miss with Joe is that it's always an insert mode meaning that you you can always just type away and it's easy to uh, write into a line or overwrite something when you're not paying attention because you're always uh, in inserting uh, code mode and uh, it's difficult to have an insert and and the control mode so that's why I in the end at the end of the day I always uh, come back to Vim or VI because I like the fact that to do, to change something you have to get into insert mode and um, and uh, otherwise you're just in command mode and so uh, recently I was on a very long flight and I wanted to check out something some some minor um, PL1 uh, program and I didn't want to fire up a whole 3270 uh, session in the airplane also because uh, the 3270 uh, because of the uh, because of the encryption if it gets disconnected just for a brief time the whole session um, will will fail and uh, and so I wanted to be able to do some very light programming on my laptop in the airplane without having to worry about keeping a a, um, a, a 3270 session going all the time 
and uh, and in fact when you have to do just very quick work and you want to do just something having to fire up a 3270 session is sometimes a little cumbersome what i wanted to do is just do it from my mac os i wanted to edit something submit it for compilation and get the results back without having to fire up a 3270 uh, terminal session now as we know in recent years uh, there's been a lot of noise um, about zoe which is uh, let me see if I can find it here. Zoe, uh, IBM Zoe. It's it's uh, it's kind of a workflow um, to uh, to edit and submit jobs using um, just any normal uh, client uh, such as Linux or uh, or uh, macOS or probably even Windows. I'm not even sure. But um, there is a lot of software involved to do this in Visual Studio, which is, which is a good editor. I sometimes use it myself, but I'm not crazy about it. And then you need to install and operate all kinds of stuff. So I didn't want to do any of that. I just want to write my JCL or my program and submit it and get the results back all in the same uh, session. So I went in and created a VI or Vim um, uh, workflow to, to do all that. And this is what this video today is about, where how can we use Vim, never leave Vim, always stay inside Vim, submit jobs, get the results back, check out the results and uh, correct and send it again. So let's see how I can do that. Let me just show you here what I've done. First of all, I'll give you an example of how, how it works for me. And then later on, I'll show you how this all works so you can do it yourself. So. First of all, let me create um, some kind of job. Um, let's do a very simple JCL, so you don't have to watch me type too long. think uh, which one megabyte is more than enough for uh, uh, I think a 20 or 18 instruction program but uh, just so that um, it doesn't fail and then we have And uh, I guess all of you know IFBR14 is a very simple program. It just enters and then immediately exits again. And it's a program that's sometimes required if you need to allocate data sets or you need to do things because you always need to run a program. You cannot have a job control language without uh, any execution of a procedure or a program. So here IBM created a very simple program, which is famous because it was only like enter the program and immediately exit again but actually in the very first version of it there was a bug in this very first, in this very simple 18 instruction program or even less maybe it's 10 instructions and i have a video on this channel where i show um, how i create actually my own ifbr 14 which is extremely simple and um, so it says print and we put in says event just in case Okay, so now I have this um, okay so this program is now written and it's a very simple job as you can see it's just uh, um, uh, class A message level uh, just running just running this program it basically does nothing at all so now um, I create a new space here actually. Um, and now I submit this job I just write you know I have a function key I press F11 in my case and here is the output again so uh, this was just executed on a on a ZOS mainframe um, we send it and of course it's extremely fast because it doesn't really do anything and uh, I can go check here um, what's wrong now. Let's say that I want to edit this um, and I want to remove this line here. So, um, so now just run it again. So 
can see here it shows me here as a selection of the job and I execute it and it sends it to the mainframe and here is the output now without uh, the sys append which of course in a, in this job will not append because uh, it's debugged by now after 50 years 50 plus years uh, so and we can see here this is done so uh, this is the workflow when we have uh, when we have a ZOS system and that will get into how this all works in a, in a, in a while but what if we want to send it to our beloved MVS 3.8 uh, uh, with uh, that we that we have from the TK4 distribution so let's see how we could do that um, I have here a session going where is it? Okay, so as you can see here, we have MVS 3.8 running, and um, and in here, actually, I want to stop MS1 because I don't need it. Uh, as you know, our MVS 3.8, as delivered by Jurgen Winkelmann's TK4 minus, uh, includes an FTP server. So we can actually do f start FTP D server port equals 2300 so now I can uh, enter let's make this a little smaller and of course we're going to watch here for execution so I go again into my the same job Obviously, this is going to execute the user we have in here. We could change it. Well, let's just change it. Because, um, oops. Okay, so we've got this uh, done. And now we do the same thing again. And we submit this. But we now add TK4, uh, so we can tell uh, my workflow that I want to send this to TK4. And as you can see, it just executed here. So now let's check how this all works, uh, so that we can understand what the workflow is. So I have here uh, a script that I created, and this looks at you know, at the beginning, this look will look a little bit complicated, but it's actually very, very simple. And the only part that we want to focus on right now is this part. So we have here an FTP, and we have I have two versions of this. One is for ZOS. This is the version here. And then if we say TK4 as a second argument, as you just saw, then this goes to um, MVS 3.8. In the case that we don't have uh, TK4, we want to send it to ZOS. All it really does is it uh, connects to the host, um, and then it says quote uh, site file type JS, and then it sends the job and gets the output from that job as soon as it's finished processing. So this will be blocking here, and then as soon as the result from JS comes back, it writes it into uh, file in the temporary di uh, directory in the temp directory and then we just cat this file that's all there really is to it and then later on we delete of course the file once we're done so this really this is really all there is to it at the center of the script and and if we do this with mbs 3.8 with the case we just saw here then we again we ftp here i use 2300 for my systems because uh, i don't want to run this as root and then we log in uh, switch to ascii Put the job into the internal reader and i have uh, actually a video on my channel uh, called mbs um, uh, youtube mbs ftp i think it's uh, video 73 uh, yeah uh, it's this one actually so 70 m74 where i show how to use ftp for job submission and that's exactly what we're doing here we're just using the ftp uh, job submission that's all there really is to it and so um and then uh we just indicate that the job was submitted and everything else in the script which i will make of course available um 
um, for everybody here to use. Everything else is error checking, making sure that indeed we have a job, um, removing um, the JCL extension, file extension, so that uh, we don't have it uh, in the temporary output. All This is all there really is to it. Everything else is just pure FTP. And uh, it can be done with Vim, it can be done with Emacs. I'm sure it can also be done with uh, the Microsoft uh, VS uh, editor. It can be done really with anything. And that's a good thing about this, uh, this uh, approach is that it's very compatible with everything. There's a few little tricks here um, that the people who are very familiar with scripting on, uh, on Unix of I'm gonna um, see but I'll explain it immediately so you have this very strange line here what does this mean so we connect to host and we will supply the input um, from an end of file delimiter uh, character and so just like in in JCL we have uh, something like uh, you all familiar with this thing here which means end of uh, season in um, in uh, in uh, Unix scripting, we have the same thing. So we define here an end of file delimiter, which is uh, star star or asterisk asterisk. And then what this means is that uh, we supply this as input to the dialog that's going to come up. And so um, so first we supply the user, which. Uh, which uh, is um, either defined in the script itself, I have it as environment variables because I don't want people to see my user and password. But of course, uh, for uh, MVS 3.8 TK4, it's herc01 and see you later as the password and the host, in my case here is local, local host, so there's no secrets here. And, um, and then um, we supply this uh, this user herc01 see you later's password we'll switch to ascii because we ha we're sending an ascii and then we just put the job to the internal reader this is the internal reader of mbs and uh, and then we quit and that's it that's all there really is to it so we could actually do this by hand uh, if i do echo host you will see that it says local host and if i say user it will say herc01 and if i say password it will say see you later as the password so um, it's really just exactly the same um, you could also write it in here but i don't advise putting any user id in a script and password certainly not in a script but you could uh, in my case it's just environment variable and so then i just do oops i just connect to the host uh, FTP local oh because of course we need to specify the port and then we do this and then see you later as the password ASCII and then I just say put um, AA internal reader and uh, <laughs> that's all there really is to it so uh, we re really what I just did here on the on the command line. That's all we're really we're doing here in the script, and this way we can do all of this stuff from within Vim. Never have to live Vim or Emacs, whatever your uh, editor of choice is. I'm sure there's also a way to do this in Joey um, or Joe, the uh, the editor that I just showed you before, and so. Um, uh, and this end of file that I'm showing here is then terminated with this one. So here we're just saying um, get the input for the FTP session uh, from below until you encounter an end of file, which I define as this two asterisk, and here we have it again. So once this is done, uh, in, uh, we get out of the FTP session and we return back to Vim. Now I want to show also some, as you saw, I have some function keys that I press to prepare the submit. Uh, which is the script we're just looking at right now here, and um, and uh, but there is some things that uh, I set in my in my uh, Vim RC file. So one is F10. F10 for me splits new and resizes to 35. So this is the I can do right here. 
right? If I press F10, it actually splits the screen and, uh, and resizes it so that I have my JCL on top. Uh, right now you don't see JCL, but if I had JCL, I would be on top and then the output from the execution of the JCL will come in the bottom, uh, in the bottom um, pane. And, um, and then F11 just prepares for me the submission. So I don't have to type it each time. So, so you can see here if I press F11, it shows it up here. So um, again, I'm going to press now F11. Look here at the bottom. Um, see, and now I only have to supply the the name of the of the file I want to send, and then it will submit it. Um, then I also have an F12, which does a tail of um, of the output, sorry, F12 actually searches for the beginning of the JS2 output here, JS2 job load. And that's all that F2, F12 does. If I press F12, it will go to the beginning of the next job. And then I have some highlighting for um, for uh, JS2 um, uh, keywords so that we can have a little bit of highlighting. And all the rest of my um, of my VMRC is really just more about having uh, JCL highlighting and stuff, like, and stuff like that. So as you can see here, this is all highlight link. Uh, it's all about JCL highlighting. You can see it all here. Uh, but we've already, um, I've already talked about uh, JCL highlighting in, uh, in uh, previous videos. Now, there's one thing left, which is this red bar that you see here. I find this very, um, very useful for me. Um, as you can see here, set color column 80. Some people like to put it at 72. Um, but uh, what I'm putting in here is where do I get uh, over the length of a, of a card? And... Um, and so you can change this. Some people like to have it at 72 or whatever. So this is really all there is to it. Um, and um, uh, I can also press F6. And then if I press F6 here, as you can see here, it shows me the line numbers. If I press F5, it removes the, high, the line numbers. So this is my VimRC. And the combination of the VimRC and my submit script will make it possible to, do a, uh, to have a workflow from a um, from the command line without ever having to open up an ISPF session. Now, there's really no reason why you have to do this within Vim, having said all that, right? So um, I can also, sorry, I can also just execute the script from anywhere. And let's say I have this, uh, this uh, uh, PL1 job here and uh, just uh, the usual You've seen this many times before in this channel. It calculates uh, the positions uh, of n queens on an n by n chessboard, and so um, I like to use this because uh, I don't use recursion, and uh, it's a good, it's always a good exercise. I, and whenever I have to write something on the mainframe in any language, I first write this uh, this solver for the n queen problem, n queens problem. So. Uh, uh, here I have this uh, very simple JCL with the with the PL1 uh, uh, program in in the same JCL, and I can just run this job from uh, here. So I can just say submit and Q and uh, run it from here and get the output here on the screen. So this, I don't have to run submit from within Vim or Emacs or whatever. And right now it submitted this to. Uh, mainframe and here is the result back 92 solutions found and uh, I can also uh, do it like this of course uh, Queens listing that's another way to do it so this is uh, this is fully uh, Unix style scriptable and pipeable if that is even a word uh, we'll get the result in a second here and so then I can go now and look at the output here. As you can see here, this was executed. I get uh, highlighting for JS2 um, uh, kind of keywords, and uh, JCL is gets uh, JCL gets highlighting. Uh, what doesn't get highlighting actually is PL1 because I don't have 
Uh, I didn't put in any highlighting rules for PL1, but I could easily do that. Uh, as you can see, it's all just yellow here on my terminal. But I could define some PL1 um, uh, keywords in my VMRC, and then I would get the highlighting for that as well. Everything else is really, uh, as you can see here, uh, easy to. Uh, to scroll up and down and see errors. So this is a whole, uh, the workflow doesn't have to be inside an editor. It can also be done from any command line. Now, I know that a lot of you will say that uh, submit does FTP and the FTP is not secure. I know. <laughs> and uh, But of course, I'm not running FTP over the public internet. Uh, whenever I run this, of course, I first build an encrypted VPN to the mainframe. So no worries about uh, FTP, no need to start. Uh, uh, a, uh, a, a whole discussion here. Yes, I, I will not send FTP over over the uh, over the wire if it's not encrypted, obviously. So uh, this is uh, what I wanted to show for today. Um, this the the submit script will be is already available um, here. Um, let me show you where you can find it. If you go to GitHub. Um, to my MVS repository, Moshix MVS. If you search for submit, uh, it's there already. So uh, here it is. So here's the whole script and uh, you can just download it and play with it, do whatever you want to do with it. So now the only part that's really missing is how do we make the backend work? And so for that, we need to go, I want to go back to my terminal. Uh, it should be here somewhere. Uh, here it is. So um, let's use this terminal here. I'm connected to my mainframe, and now more and more people are using the IBM New Learning uh, program so that you can obtain legally ZDT, I think it's called, with uh, with a license to use uh, ZOS for learning purposes. I think it's excellent. So more and more people are now going to have. A, uh, a mainframe to play with and I already know some people who have obtained the license to do that. I myself use uh, ZPDT obviously um, and so my ZOS runs on the ZVM because I have ZPDT but how do we make uh, submit work? So to do that let's go to um, SDSF and you will see here that obviously I have FTP running as you can see here my FTP is running here and, uh, and if you have FTP running, uh, then you can just connect to it. Obviously, you could also uh, do this uh, in many other ways. You could use SSH if you want to. I myself have a, an encrypted connection to my mainframe, so that's why I don't worry about FTP. And FTP kind of works everywhere. There is, however, something that about the configuration of FTP that is important. And uh, you will see this really only um, in hidden <laughs> deep down in documentation that's why I want to show this this is important so to configure FTP to work nicely it will work most of the time but if you really want it to uh, work nicely all the time you need to go to um, uh, TCP IP FTP data in your ZOS and uh, here you want to put in something to the extent of uh, just interface level two, so um, this so just interface level two allows you to use um, uh, your user ID in a more liberal way. If by default it comes as just interface level one, which is way more restricted. So you want to have just interface level two here configured in this data set here: tcpip.ftp.data and then restart your FTP job um, or uh, pr pr server. And then it comes up with just interface level two, which allows you to do more things and uh, it's a little bit easier to work with. And uh, so once you do that, you restart um, FTP and then it will come back up again um, uh, in the, configured in the proper way. <clears throat> now you can, um, whatever I showed here, we can also, um, you don't only necessarily have to send um, jobs, you can also do uh, console commands if you're allowed to. So um, if you look at this uh, little 
uh, file here, I put in here a dash, sorry, uh, um, what is it called? Uh, um, uh, whatever it's, <laughs> I don't remember right now, but how it's called, but I put in here uh, this command here with the asterisk right after it, dollar $VS. And then you can put in here any kind of uh, command you want to put in. So I put in here DAL. I could also put in here uh, uh, commands to stop um, something and then restart it again. So we can put them all here and then I can just do submit um, uh, commands. And if we go now to my terminal and we go to log, you will see that I got uh, DAL here executed. Um, so uh, you can also put in just two commands or console commands if you're if you're authorized yourself to do that or if your shop authorized you to do it. Uh, so this works uh, just as well. And uh, and of course you can also just FTP and do it by hand if you if you really want to. Uh, just remember that if you use FTP, of course, secure your channel, uh, your communication channel to the mainframe, as I just mentioned before. So this is really it. If you have any questions, please post comment, uh, comments below this video. Uh, I, if you enjoyed this video, uh, please uh, press on the thumbs up button. And if you're not subscribed to the Moshix mainframe channel yet, now would be an excellent time to go do that. Thank you very much for watching. See you around soon. Thank you. Bye.